I know a bunch of you folks at home love playing first-person shooters online on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4, but there's a select few of you that have some hidden secrets somewhere in your living room or in your bedroom. You're really embarrassed about it. You don't tell your friends, you don't tell your family. Of course, I'm talking about modded controllers. Little things like this that give you a slight advantage over everyone else that's playing these games online because they offer just specific features you can't get on a regular controller set. This thing here was sent in to me by Controller Chaos, and they gave me a little Rerez logo on it, which is nice. But this here is supposed to improve my game. But does it? Let's find out. Now first off, when it comes to modded controllers, you're probably not going to be seeing these things used in tournament play because, well, they're really not tournament or sportsman-like. They're kind of a cheater's tool, but they do offer some pretty basic functionality that really doesn't do anything like auto-aiming at people, but it does have some things that kind of give you a slight advantage and free up a couple of fingers, if you ever really need that while playing a video game. Basically, what these controllers do are a ton of little tiny things that are trying to amp up your basic game. For instance, this controller here gives me the ability to have faster reloads, rapid fires, turbo melees, auto sprint, quick scope, and just a whole bunch of other stuff that is just supposed to make you play a lot better when you're in some online scenario. Now, personally, while testing out this controller, I tested all the features offline because I didn't really want to cheat with people online. But here's the thing, are these features really cheatable? Are they really cheat worthy? And really, I don't think they are. In many instances, a lot of the things this controller does are cool little additions, but they don't really do a hell of a lot for your online gameplay, specifically rapid fire. I mean, you could get the rapid fire to work pretty quick, but you could also just tap your fingers really fast as well, and it kind of gives you the same effect. I mean, I guess what this is going to do is prevent you from tapping and just hold down the button to shoot really quick, but I really don't enjoy that too much. I like to be on the same playing field as everyone else while playing, and even though I know there's some people online that have these modified controllers and they don't really, you know, say they're using them, maybe I'm not getting that level play field that I want, but still, I just assume most people don't have these really expensive controllers. For the ones that do, though, does it really benefit you that much? Because while I was playing with it, I kind of felt that it was holding me back a little. Personally. But that's just me. Now, at first glance, this controller looks like just a basic painted controller, and a whole bunch of companies online offer that feature, including Controller Chaos themselves. But if you get the modded package, at the very bottom you'll find four LEDs, which are basically signifiers when you've turned on some kind of feature. And right at the back, there's a hidden little button. When you hold that button down and then push the PlayStation button in, you have a whole bunch of selection of features you can modify and basically create different layouts and just really change up the controller to however you really want it to feel in your hands. But see, that's why I found this controller really complex. It's not as easy as just clicking a button to turn on rapid fire. You have to use some strange combo of movements to make it work. For instance, for rapid fire, you have to click the back button, this front button, and then you have to hit another back button and then that button, and then you have to hit the back button again in L2 to adjust how fast the rapid fire goes. Which is confusing, because when you're playing the game online with other people, you don't have time to think that way. You're just gonna have to shoot somebody really quick. So it becomes really hectic to remember all these layouts and remember all these settings. In fact, this controller comes with a sheet that you can just lay in front of yourself to see all the little button combinations you can have. I guess after a while you might memorize them, but I'm really not that good with memorization. So really for me, the controller's extra functionality just didn't work for me at all. But maybe you're out there and you know how to actually memorize that stuff and it's easy for you, but for me, it just didn't seem worth it. I mean, if I was going to play a game online with a bunch of people, why do I need all these extra modded features? It just didn't do much for me. The controller feels really good in your hands because it essentially just is a PlayStation 4 controller with painted parts. And I really do appreciate the glossy coating on here because I do remember a while ago we used to paint our own controllers with stupid things for stupid reasons. And I remember that after a while of using those controllers, your hands would look like you strangled a cartoon character because there'd just be colors all over yourself. 
But with this, it really doesn't feel like that's gonna happen. Kind of a neat feature too, is that the re-res controller we had customized doesn't actually have any identifiers for any of the buttons. So you have to know that that's X and that's triangle and that's square. Otherwise, well, you wouldn't know what those things are. So if you're a novice coming into PlayStation 4s, you might not want to get that kind of modification, but they have just a whole huge range of things you can set up. I think this is cool. I know what all these buttons are and I don't need them to tell me what they are. So for me, it's just a nice little glossy feature over top. But that doesn't mean that the design of it is perfect. And while the color does look really cool, you can see that there's a little bit of a gap just beneath the re-res pad here. And then right on top, because you're trying to stuff all of those extra modding controller configurations in here, the actual controller shell itself isn't perfectly sealed. There's a big noticeable gap just above the LED light here, which is not really that great, but you know, they are stuffing a lot of mod features in this controller, and I think they needed the space in there to be kind of a little bit more open. Personally, I would prefer no mod controller features in the future if I ever got another one of these things, and that way it would probably seal the whole thing up. I don't know that for certain, I just assume that's kind of how the controller would work if you didn't have the mod features in it. I tested the controller out with a bunch of games, and it really is just a basic PlayStation 4 controller if you don't use the modified features. When you do use the modified features, well, sometimes they don't work with certain games because, well, why would you need rapid fire on a game that doesn't really need rapid fire? This controller is really basically used for first person shooters and maybe a handful of others, but that's really what I found the most use for it as. And even then, I didn't like it too much, personally. I love the design of the thing, maybe because the Rebrez logo's on it just a little bit, but I do like having a clean looking controller with two-tone color schemes that don't have a bunch of symbols everywhere, especially when I already know what they are. So I like that. The mod features though, I could easily leave behind. So does the modified PlayStation 4 controller from Controller Chaos actually benefit me at all? No, no it doesn't. This thing is a really cool looking controller with a great feel, but it doesn't do anything for me personally when I'm playing games online. Look, there's gonna be some players out there, they're gonna be able to make amazing use of this thing because they're gonna know how to memorize all those button inputs. But for me, it doesn't really matter. It's not like this controller is auto-aiming on people online. In fact, the only thing it really does that benefits you is just simplifying some movements you'd be doing on the controller already. For instance, rapid fire, rapid reload, or just being able to breathe as soon as you zoom in on the sniper scope. It just does that automatically, which is really awesome but I kind of like having to do those things when I'm playing the game because it just gives you a little bit more of a feel about how those games play. And to be honest, if you really wanted to change those things on, let's say, the PC, well, you could create macros and stuff like that. And while this controller has a lot of capabilities that are very similar to that, it doesn't do anything groundbreaking other than just giving you those tiny little features a little bit more easier to use. So for me personally, I don't see myself using this controller, at least as a modified thing while playing games online. And as far as it goes to the build quality, that gap is really, really big, but it does work really well for what it says on the box. I'm just not the kind of player to use it, but if you are, you might get a kick out of this thing.